Hi, I've been working on a little plugin to create a modular weapon audio system. I was really inspired by the Borderlands 3 videos on YouTube with their sound design team walking through how they created the modular weapon audio for that game. So if you're playing any weapon you pick up, Jacobs, Theodore, whatever, depending on the barrel, depending on the magazine, whatever components are on that gun, they directly influence the sound from stereo width, compression, ammo type, pitch, volume, magazine information, all of those things influence each other based on what those weapons are and the components that are creating them. So I thought I would try to recreate a similar system using Unreal Engine, Metasounds, and the Metasound Builder. So still in progress, I have a lot still that I want to do and want to keep going with, but I figured I'd show you a little example of where we're at. So right now we are in Unreal Engine 5.4. I am using a bunch of assets from the store because it's just so much faster to get stuff up and going. So first off, I do want to plug the Ultimate Stylized Weapon Customization System. This was in one of the monthly free Epic things that they do. So I'm using this as my base because I just didn't want to spend the time building an entire modular weapon <laughs> system if it's already been made. So check it out. Super great. Other things that it will be in use is the Easy Ballistics plugin. This one was also a freebie in one of the months. Uh, check it out. It's super cool, super easy to use. You just slap on a barrel, change the magazine type, and go. So that one's great. And then environments, also not my forte. So we're using another pack. Environment bundle number six. This one I think might be free permanent collection can't remember completely but check it out but that's the like packs that are in use i just kind of kit bash them all together and of course how could i forget we're using a paragon character and then the uh, cursor is just from envato elements so as you can see we just drop in got the whole map we have two weapons available and some really cheesy effects. And if I switch weapons, I have to reload. My UI is still not there. But there you go. We have a rocket launcher and we have a rifle, I guess. And if we switch back again, reload, we can shoot rockets. Amazing. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. First, we're going to take a look at the main menu. This is provided by the weapon plugin. I'm not doing anything fancy here. We're just going to be taking a look at these two. We're going to use the rocket launcher for funsies. And then, as you can see, this plugin gives you the ability to change your different aspects in whatever fashion you want. Let's say we don't like that color. Let's go mint. Oh, great. And this will be our other backup, which we're just going to use standard bullet. Okay, great. So we got two weapons. Let's enter the test level. All right. We spawned in as Paragon character. We've got the nice little scope, courtesy of Envato Elements. And then we've got our environment. And we go. Okay. So, rocket launcher. Shoots rockets. Amazing. Reload it, and then let's switch to the rifle. Oh, it also shoots a bullet. Great. So apparently reloading is not come over, so that's something that I'll have to work on. But there you have it. So you can add the different modules in the main menu, and that'll come into the game. And then you can switch weapons back and forth, which is great. So let's take a look at what is kind of going on from a design perspective. Because it's one thing to come up with an idea, but another thing to execute it. But I realized I cannot execute it without a really good paper plan. So I started actually sketching a few things and then realized I can just make a spreadsheet. 
I like keeping things organized. Let's just do that. And I went first was trying to figure out what are all of the different aspects? What do all weapons have? What are the things that I need to be adjusting? So first off, I just listed all of the different modules, what they all are. And then I realized ammo is going to be these three different ammo types. So with the barrel, I had to think about how does it impact a bullet, a beam, or a rocket? Or how does a scatter impact the sound of the bullet, the beam, the rocket? Taking from the Borderlands 3 video, the shorter barrel is louder, more percussive, longer barrels will be more controlled and precise. It's controlling overall width and adjusting tails. Less space also means more precision. The handguard adds some elemental damage. You might have remember seeing it added fire or electricity. So that's going to actually provide uh, like a crackle or some flamey sounds. The magazine is quantity of bullets and things I wanted to do for increasing pitch or volume. Scope is going to change stereo width. It's going to add in more heartbeat or breath. The stock make changes pitches. I added in some springy sounds and gas ejection sounds. And then the trigger was really hard to figure out what to do with it. Uh, a lot of it with the trigger is actually just defining how the gun fires, not necessarily directly impacting the sound. But I realized oh, I can do a little bit of pitch volume and maybe like some EQ pinch boost. It kind of got me going. I started plonking along in UE with some ideas. And then I realized very quickly that that is not going to help. <laughs> I had to sit down and be like, okay, how do I connect things? What is the actual order that things need to connect? This graph here, which just so happens to also look like a weapon, unintentional, I promise, is the final map of where I ended up with. But I didn't actually get here right at the start. I think I started with a simple flow of it's going to go from maybe the ammo to the stock to the mag to the trigger, like linearly left to right. I hadn't been thinking about how to combine multiple things. What got me to that point though was actually whiteboarding. And whiteboarding is something I do quite a bit when I'm trying out new ideas. A whiteboard is just a simple meta sound source that is used to come up with ideas. So I started out by listing all of my different modules. I gave them little colors and I assigned them to my color palette so that I could then color things in the future. That way I always knew that magazine was in this color, trigger, etc. I added their little descriptions from the other document and went from there. And again, I started going with like, okay, ammo into mag into trigger. And I started realizing that that just doesn't work right from this scenario. Because different things flow into other things and I wanted to be able to control, like I wanted to control the pitch of the source, not implement pitch delay nodes after the fact to change that. So I realized, okay, I need to be able to send stuff from the magazine to the ammo or from the trigger to the mechanics. So that led me down to this more spaghetti mess of, well, organized spaghetti, let's be honest, of how to connect everything. And you'll notice there's lots of nodes, lots of pins, but Metasound Builder takes care of it all for us, which is great. You'll notice some are MSPs, some are SFX. And my logic behind this was any sort of module that is producing sound, things like the ammo or the mech or the stock, even the handguard, they're all Metasound sources they are providing audio. Any module that interacts with a source is going to be a patch, a meta sound patch, because it's not providing audio. I don't need to A, B test it in an actual graph. I can just do pure function math in them. That's how I decided to break it down into two categories of a source versus a patch but both use the same concept of a parent-child relationship or presets. I use a lot of presets, and the reason I'm doing this is because it makes it very easy to go in and define how the beam or the bullet or the rocket is determined. So I can actually open up 
the scope as well. And you'll see I've got the one times, 1.5, three times. And they're all based off of that same preset kind of scenario. So let's look at the mech for a moment here. So this one, for example, we're taking my interfaces, which I'll get to in a second, and doing some pitch math and then applying that to my different sound sources. So I've got three different layers. So every single module, beam bullet rocket, will have the same internal guts. And then I just manually change them as required so that the layers are different. All right, so let's talk about interfaces here. I wanted to make sure that stuff connected very easily. And I actually got this tip from Amir BK from Undaw. He was saying that the MetaSound Builder can auto-connect nodes based on interfaces. You can make your own interfaces. You don't have to override engine classes. I can create all of my module weapon audio node to nodes. And so my thought was, if we go back to this document, you'll see all of the green ones. Those are interfaces. Every green one is sending data to another module. So what this means is I now have sending and receiving interfaces. I could have doubled the amount of interfaces and done just sending and just receiving interfaces, but instead I decided to kind of combine them. For example, if we look at send to mech. So this is the magazine to mechanics. And then we also have mag mechanics here. So this is going to receive from the mag. And this is sending to. So it does get a little airy sometimes because in the parent class, you don't see the inputs or the outputs all the time. But in all of the children, you do. So that is why I made sure all of these receives. The mech doesn't receive from the handguard. It sends. All of them are at the bottom of the list. So really, when you're editing information for this patch, for example, you just need to edit the dev, mech, those kinds of things. That's interfaces. They're awesome. But how did I make them? So let's take a look at some C++. So once again, thanks to Amir for the tips on this and just digging through his code. But then also shout out to the Harmonix guys. I spend a lot of time looking through their stuff as well. Let's take a look at an interface here. Here's my includes. Nothing terribly fancy. Those are your proxy and interface. I do want to note, I really wanted to make sure that I had localization enabled. Following through Amir's stuff, the localization didn't seem to be working properly. And the reason I could tell is whenever I looked at a node, this flag had a little, you know, those warning triangles. I'm not entirely sure why his method didn't allow for localization. So I went through how the different interfaces by Epic were created and realized, okay, I need to make sure I have lock text added, I need to start end it. And then I started looking into how that all works. You lock text your whole thing, and then you add your interface namespace. Also, more namespaces. Epic loves namespaces. Actually, very handy for getting through stuff. So this is the big class you inherit from the parameter interface. Do your null pointers, do your constructor, inputs and outputs, name of the interface, versions. This is just getting the interface, registering it, destructor. And then this is the most important point. Within the private section, we have an F input, which is an array of generated inputs and outputs. You notice I got a two here, two for the, they're called vertexes. These little green, all these little dots, those are called vertexes. So we all call them pins, we all call them nodes. They are called vertexes. But what's going on here? So we've got generated inputs, we're only doing two. Make sure it's the same quantity, otherwise things break. So first off, we have display name, description, data type, initial value, wildcard, and then sort order. We love sort orders. And what is going on with this lock text? Lock texts need a key map scenario. This is the key that lives in this map, for example. And then this is the value. So localization knows, okay, within the modular weapon audio barrel LFS, 
this key of receive volume modifier name as a value of this. So we can use that for localization. Same goes for the description, key value, and then data type, float, int, bool, trigger. You'll have to look at the rest of them, I forget off the top of my head. Initialization value, this is going to be the name that you're going to use in editor and then what you want to initialize it to. So if we look at this guy, for example, that's going to be your input name here. And if you put in the periods, it will keep the folder hierarchy as well. So that's how you do these nice little drop downs. If you like keeping things tidy. This though, what are you? So let's show you what this does. I'll just uh, we'll make a new graph here. Oh, yeah, test. So let's add an interface. Barrels. You'll notice it doesn't auto add any pins. No worries. And let's say we're going to send data. Well, warning. How did I do that? It must be connected. Hey, cool. That's what this line does. I kind of wish it had the little rider hint, but it doesn't. And that's okay. So yeah, you can add a little warning that way. Same goes for outputs. One to one, just match them up. Okay, so let's look at how that works in Blueprint. Okay, so let's look at the weapon manager. Be in play, just some setup. We're going to load up some weapon info and then we're going to switch the, to the new weapon. I didn't want to directly use the enums that the ultimate weapon module plugin uses because I found that if I ever wanted to decouple from them, it would be very hard to if I like baked in their enum. There will definitely need to be some adjustment if I ever do decouple them. So this just loads some information in. This is the easy ballistics. And then begin play, you've switched to the weapon. When we switch weapons, we're just clearing out everything. OK, so builder, this is just how you create a builder in general. And a builder, let's take a look at this test one. A builder is this graph. So always remember a meta sound source builder is just the entire thing. Depending on the settings, you are just going to set mono, stereo, one shot, not. So as soon as we build that graph, we just have a blank graph. Okay, so we built it and now we're adding two triggers. We're adding a fire.press, fire.release, because this is going to be used for the beam in the future. And then just some print strings for debugging. And since I did not want to be having a bajillion little variables, I decided to stick them all in a custom struct that I made, which so made that in C++. So if we take a look at the weapon manager, I believe it is, it'll be in here. So we've got just different structs for different aspects, tails, nodes, source graph. That's the one we were just looking at where it's got all of the different things. And then, yeah, it's an actor component. The manager sits on the weapon. Okay, so we create the builder. Now we're getting the details. So this is that conversion. So that just duplicates them and then creates that copy. And then we now are selecting sounds from modules. Now this is actually a C++ function that I decided to create because I thought it would be faster than using a blueprint to look through everything. So what we're doing is I have created a bunch of T-maps for every single module that can be equipped to the gun. So what this does is it looks at the selected enums for every single type. What it does is it looks through and checks to see which one it is and then pulls the appropriate graph. So what that means is in my defaults, I have my maps of the different aspects and it'll look through each one of these and grab the appropriate one based on the details that were assigned here. So whatever these are, it will find the appropriate one and then it's going to stick it in another T-map called Current Weapon Nodes. It's going to take that particular enum for the ammo and match it to the graph. So now we have another map of nodes, which is great. So these are all of the nodes that we are going to be using. So now we have all of those nodes, but we still don't have them in the graph. 
we just have a list of them. So now we need to add them. So first off, I'm gonna grab all of the Unreal Engine natural nodes, I'm trying to make sure I had my map always in the nearby, because I needed to remember stereo mixer, stereo mixer, what type of mixer, with compression. And you'll notice in this one, if it is a native UE module, you can actually grab the namespace and mix the name from it. And if I open up a notepad, I actually have one here. So this one is the trigger compare. So the, how did I get this? Let's just delete it and uh, we'll show you. So let's do the enter. If you ever want to, all you're gonna do is copy it. Control C, Command C, and paste, Command V. But here it is, namespace, UE, name, interp2. That is how you grab a node's name. So we do all that. And you'll notice I got a little bool in this function. I decided to combine them. And all we're doing is we're getting the source builder, we're adding a no node to the graph by class name, or we're adding it by node class. And then we're adding it to another map of graphs that have been added to here. So what this is doing is that next map is going to contain all of the different ones that have been on here. So then I'll have a list of all of the active nodes. Great. So that's that guy. So we do that and then we add our own rebuilt ones. It's like a stereo compressor patch that I made or stereo wave shaper. Great, great, great. Add them all. Amazing. And then we get into the current weapon nodes. We're looping through by an array element, checking the enum, finding the module, finding the and then we are adding that. Oh look, the node class. Great, adding them in. These are just some print strings for debugging to make sure I knew who added what, when, where. Okay, so that adds all of them. Every single node to the graph. We end up, I think, with like 17. Now we need to connect them all. And this is where those interfaces come into play. So we had another little function. We are gonna connect the sending to the receiving. Looks for the builder. If the builder's valid, if you have the nodes, if the nodes exist, great. We are going to check to see if the node I'm trying to send is on the graph. We're going to make sure that they, everything is like all validity checks. And then we're just going to connect them by interface bindings. And this auto magically connects the interfaces. And I did that for all of the nodes except for the UE ones because you'll notice on the graph here, these purple pinky lines are audio connections, which is default UE. You don't need to really do any interface connecting. You just grab audio outputs and connect them to audio inputs. So that's module interfaces. This is the audio connections. Another function, we're gonna connect ammo to mixer and mech to mixer. And I had to define which pins we're connecting to. So this function actually just looks at the node, checks to see if it has an audio pin. If it does, great. We're going to get the pins and the outputs. We're going to get those pins and we're going to connect nodes. So we just connect everything just like in the graph. Connect, 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 connect all the way through. So many connections. But our final one, amazing. Final one, we're connecting the stereo mixer 2 to our out. And that one is connect nodes, connect nodes, and here's my audio outputs from my source graph. And we've finally, here, we've got all of the nodes connected, except for all of the fire nodes. So if you look at this graph, we've got fire release, fire press. We still gotta connect these. This loops through all of the nodes that have been added to the map that are like all of these loops through all of these nodes and checks if we can connect to the fire vertex. So there's a lot of a lot of debugs going on. The node has the name. If it does, great. If it doesn't, okay. And then we're gonna connect it to those two nodes that I had pre-saved, cached in this guy. 
And then, so we do that for outputs, and we do that, or sorry, we do that for the release, and we do that for the fire press. And that goes through the entire thing, <laughs> checking to make sure they're all connected. Now we gotta make sure we connect on plays as well. So same thing, go through, look for on plays, connect them. I do, we do have the option of adding user control. I had started dealing with like magazine count and eventually I'd like to do the ability to set the stereo compression or the overall gain or like outside of control bus mixing. And I'll add some little, little larger global settings But finally, you can audition it. That starts us up and go on. I do have fire. Make sure it's valid. Fire.press. Update magazine count. And then our reload sound and our auto ammo sounds. That is how A, you create a builder. B, how you audition a builder. And C, how you connect everything in the middle. Thank you for checking this out. Hope it was kind of informative and take care.